Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, Issei got badly betrayed by Ria's part 1. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Go support and follow the Lucifer S. Morningstar for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. How the hell did he find out? Her arms were trembling as she tried to rub away the cold shiver crawling up her spine that was now spilling out onto her shoulders. She was terrified, the note was written in blood, Azazel's, along with a dark feather Issei used to pen it. Next to the letter was an evil piece, a pawn, also covered in the crimson liquid, but this was Issei's. How did he survive the purging one, he should be dead. In most cases, this would be true, but the note was delivered by a client of hers, one that Ria's herself had charmed into financing her more lucrative endeavors. He described Issei to a T, stating that his clothes and face were covered in blood, did he purge them all? She was currently trying to track him, but he was in several different places at once. How did he survive that? She had wondered why her pawn went dark, especially after they just got ASIACA back two months ago. At first, she simply thought that his use of juggernaut drive had left him in need of rest. The evil pieces acted as a sort of battery, which his new form drained. Was he trying to master it, she thought at the time. It put him down for at least a week last time. Now it was all clear, she was exposed. Was that stupid argument the trigger, she could not even recall what it was about now. I wish I never reincarnated you her memories caused her to tear up. I should have never have said that. I should have never called out to you either devil at the memory of his venomous words, she collapsed in a leather chair filled with bitter tears. It had been a month to the day since that argument. When did you piece it together? They say I am so sorry. She looked at her desk and the bloody note, what have I done? One month ago, Cow Park. Issei had to blow off some steam and refocus, though he was still pissed, he had already forgotten what the orc president and he were arguing about. He left the club building in a fit of rage, and before he knew it, he was back to where it all began Cow Park. He was staring blankly at the water fountain where Raynor had ended his first life as a human. Drake, Issei said as he leaned toward the fountain his hands gripped its edge with his arms bracing himself. It happens partner, just give her and yourself some time. Issei smiled and closed his eyes at the dragon's response. Huh, why are we back here? It's a reminder for me, how she saved my life, how Issei paused suddenly his mind flashed back to that day. She Issei's eyes began to shake wildly, and his breath quickened. Was there watching? Issei what's wrong? Issei ignored Drake's question as he recalled that night's events. Issei I can feel your fear, let me in. Issei was now breathing hard, why was her familiar there? Issei. Break that night I died. Issei began, would you have been activated eventually? Yes, the next night in fact, why do you ask? Issei's pupils shrank as he slowly put each horrible piece together, he had now let Dreg in. What's going on here, why are you playing back information Serzich's gave? She knew Dreg, tell me what would have happened if you manifested the next day. A natural awakening would have she purposely limited your power wait no. Issei and Dreg were now as one as his host's fear now melted and merged into the dragon's own their fury. They all did. The angels, the fallen, the devils. Drake roared, over the past year the Welsh dragon had grown attached to his current host. He treated him respect, as a sentient being, not just some tool, but a friend, a confidant, an ally. She wanted me kill Drake. Issei clenched his fists, causing them to pop like firecrackers going off. She wanted your power. Our power Issei. Drake corrected him. Listen up partner, this is what we are going to do. Issei dunked his head in the fountain, then shot it out again sending water flying. She can track us, what I am about to ask you is going to put you in unimaginable pain. You want me to purge my evil pieces? Issei answered, but that meant death. Not all at once, do that, and I doubt even I can prevent you a second death. Drake assured. She'll notice and could kill me before I could finish. Despite being the current host of Drake, he was a far cry from Rhea's current level. No, the bitch is still trapped by her own anger over that argument however we can make sure she stays angry. Drake then explained that they could expel each piece by sparring with various devils and angels alike fallen or otherwise. I did not want to reveal this, because you embarrass me enough with your vile obsession but he had Issei's complete attention now. As a dragon, the urge to mate will release an aura of desire and attract potential mat mates. Issei's eyes lit up as Drake slowly began to cry in shame. Stuffing his embarrassment he continued. This is how we will keep her angry. It was no secret to all her peerage that Ria's was possessive and easily prone to jealousy. My aura will only enhance her jealous anger and keep her from detecting our true motive, however. Issei braced for impact, there's always a but. Till you expel them all you will be bleeding and healing constantly it is going to get messy, not to mention painful. Drake explained further to his partner that he can mask the evil pieces temporarily, and when they he expels them all he will end the masking, so they could regroup and truly recover. So who's first? Issei was all too eager to start. 
For the first three weeks, Issei would continue to flirt with various other girls. Drake was not kidding about his animal magnetism, had he known this earlier no, despite it all Issei lacked confidence and would cuck himself every time. Now, this was different, Drake's aura lit something in him, giving himself the confidence he needed to incite a deep change in him. Was this what dragons felt all the time? He finally believed in himself thank you my red dragon emperor. Why are you thanking me? I just used it once for 30 minutes partner these past weeks have been all you. Issei almost cried. I love you Drake. He whispered as he closed his eyes entering his mindscape. He saw the big dragon there and ran to him embracing his face when he lowered it. You're the best you big overgrown lizard. You're welcome you damn horny bastard, I love you too. Issei tightened his embrace as a tear fell from his cheek. This was his day today and it infuriated Rias to no end. In the afternoon during those weeks, he would spar with either Kaneko, Akeno, or Kiba. At the end of each match, Issei allowed them a crushing blow, so he could purge an evil piece at the same time. They were none the wiser as Drake would cast a sword of fog over the piece before it was expelled. The fog perfectly camouflaged it as it then seemed to bury itself and disappear. To mix it up, at night he would use magic circles to transport to the Grigori and spare with various fallen. Like with Kaneko, Akeno, and Kiba before them, he purposely throws the match expelling an evil piece with their crushing blow. Drake was not kidding about the pain he would suffer from this. However, with each sparring match, Issei was building up a tolerance to his sacred gears boosting. He could now overboost his gear so that he could heal himself when he finally collapsed on his bed. His antics and promiscuity had left his bed cold at night, the girls did not sleep with him. Um. He hissed to himself, they were all involved, save Asia, Rias knew of the fallen in her territory that night. It was the same with her, Asia was reincarnated because of twilight healing. Nothing goes unnoticed in a devil's territory unless it is allowed. Sersiches told him that, it was a great violation of truces made for other devils, angels, and fallen to operate within a devil's territory without invitation. Which meant that Rias not only knew they were there, and why she invited them. As for her learning that he and Asia had sacred gears, that would be all Azazel, the Lord of Information. Rainer and her company worked under Azazel, however, they got greedy and wanted the sacred gears for themselves. Regardless, they, him and Asia, were nothing but tools, toys to be used in their precious raiding games, or for a war that was coming. Days before the present, the Grigori, Issei was almost ready to purge the last piece, Rias was on the verge of madness due to her own greedy jealousy. He had one more piece to purge and knew exactly how and where to do it. Under the guise of training, he walked into Azazel's office. All right old man I think, no I know, I can take you down. Issei said playfully hiding his sweltering wrath underneath. Azazel chuckled, he was completely oblivious to what his true intentions were. What do you say, old man, you and me, mono y angelito, cute. Azazel was liking this new side of Issei, he was proud of him and the new initiative he took to get stronger. Okay Issei, let's do it. Azazel made a magic circle and beckoned him to enter. Together they passed through into a pocket dimension. If you are going to challenge me suddenly Issei purged his last piece. Do. Azazel's eyes widened as he saw the horror before his eyes, Issei. Issei was screaming, traitors. Issei's voice rang out with Drake's wrathful roar. Azazel turned pale as his former understudy went into his balance breaker. Scale mail without calling it out. Steam seemed to be emanating from the red scales and plated armor, the emerald jewels from his knees and gauntlets pulsed to the tune of Drake and Issei's wrath, boost. Azazel could hear Drake call out with each pulse, it soon swelled into a cacophony of the word repeated over and over until. Over booster. At this Issei charged Azazel who was all too ill prepared for this, as soon as he summoned his artificial scared gear, Issei shattered it with one punch. Boost. Azazel could not get into the right headspace, why was Issei doing this? Why? Do you think I wouldn't find out? Issei was livid, Azazel did not understand. But Issei, find out what? They clasped each other's hands as they grappled with each other. Boost. Azazel heard Drake shout out, this was different, the way Issei was fighting it was not like a regular devil. Before he could even form a plan Issei ripped his arms down as his gauntlets began to glow. Dragon shot. Energy seemed to explode from Issei's gauntlets, obliterating both Azazel's arms and ripping the beautiful jet black feathers from off all 12 of his wings. You all planned my death. Issei's armored hand sizzled as the energy hummed and dissipated into several sparking bolts. Azazel could not believe his eyes his arms were gone, just vaporized from existence. He suddenly felt the burning from his back and what remained of his wings. I am nothing but a tool for all of you. Issei. Azazel could not believe what he was hearing, his own sins coming back to haunt him. He was the mastermind behind the plot to harness the Red Dragon Emperor's power. Years of research, tracking the traits of what made someone the ideal host for the scared gear. Issei was to be, for the lack of a better metaphor, the red dragon's chosen one, the one to bring the other dragons under heel. 
When that would happen, the other pantheons would be destroyed or enslaved. It would be the end of all before the final battle with Trahixa, the 666 beast of revelation. I trusted you sensei. Issei called out, but I was nothing, but a ink tool to you. Boost. The cacophony rang out as Issei put his helm away, showing his wrathful tears to the governor general of the Grigori. Azazel bowed his head it's true, at the time, my dear boy. Tears fell from Azazel's own eyes. He had grown to see his executioner as a sort of surrogate son and cultured brother of the, along with all other things of explicit depravity. I will not patronize you by saying I'm sorry or begging for my life. Azazel's voice was trembling as he spoke, if I could, I would give my own to stop my past self from going through with it. Boost. The words grew louder and faster, Azazel knew what was coming. I am so proud of you son so strong. He said through tears, I just wish this act of betrayal was not the catalyst for it. Azazel knew this was just for what he did, his sin, his actions. My final prayer is that one day you could find it your heart to forgive me. Boost. Issei placed his hands on Azazel's shoulders, then pulled him to himself in an embrace. Over booster. A peace then filled Azazel that was beyond understanding. Thank you my son. Azazel then closed his eyes. Hour down. Azazel opened his eyes in shock, what the just happened. Swear loyalty and fealty to me. Azazel was shaken to his core at Issei's words. Be reborn through my own fury, for I will remake this world. There was no way around it, fate would not be denied. There was no point in trying to kneel for they were just floating around nothingness, so he shook his head yes. Drag, if you will. Suddenly Issei stabbed his arms into Azazel's and then ripped out his still beating heart. He clenched his fist exploding it, then absorbing the remains into his boosted gear. Hour taken. Seraph of the Fallen. Suddenly Issei's wings trembled, then burst into twelve new ones. Fury Reborn Balance Breaker. Fallen armor the formerly red armor began to pulse as it now seemed to be bleeding a jet black stream of color, along with the scales and plates. Underneath the scale plates of his shoulders and legs blades seemed to bounce and sway with Issei's movements. Along with his now twelve dragon wings were covered in feather-like blades, effectively Issei was now a mobile knife factory. Azazel looked on in awe as he wondered why he was not dead. Azazel, Governor General of the Gagori, your life is no longer your own. At this Azazel's arms regrew and his wings were healed. Rebel against me and you will know what I mean by crimson purgatory always suffering never dying, a fate worse than death. Me, what did Drake mean? He thought Issei was, we are one and the same now. Did he just read my mind? Yes, now deal with it. That's one. Issei said as he ripped off one of his new servant's feathers. He then commanded him to return them back to the Grigori to formulate a plan for the other traitors. 3. Issei knew he had to heal, he was lucky he caught Azazel off guard, the shock and horror of him ejecting his final evil piece, gave him the advantage. Will he be the only one we convert? Issei thought about Drake's words carefully, yes it was the Fallen's plan, but at the same time, Azazel was an asset. Yes, I plan to lay waste to these factions and put an end to their stupid ing war. For now, Issei stayed at the Grigori, Azazel had turned those who were loyal to him to Issei's side. Azazel honestly did not mind being converted, Issei was far more interesting than the others. The lengths he went to for his own vengeance, that and he was honestly free to dive into his research without ethical oversight. So long as he knew who was in charge, it was all good baby. Soon you will be transformed into a dragon partner. Issei cracked his neck as he laid in bed with a rather busty fallen with dark raven hair. Drag was speaking to his host telepathically. She had four wings and went by the name Real, commander of Azazel's elite guard. She was the first to swear fealty to Issei upon his and Azazel's return. She was a hybrid her mother became a fallen when she fell for a toy factory maintenance man. Her father was gone now, heart attack, and her mother went into seclusion after he passed. Real to this day still did not know where she went. That was when Azazel found her, he promised her that he would reunite her with her mother, Issei soon joined in on that promise. Real was taller than Issei by about a foot and a half with fair olive skin and the deepest burnt orange eyes. I say we should convert this one. Issei shook his head no, he agreed to convert Azazel because of his value to the crusade he was about to embark on. He told you to convert me again, didn't he? Issei sighed, her voice was sultry as it was deep, it reverberating deep within himself. I would not mind but honestly, I'd like to keep my own thoughts in my own head thank you. Issei rolled his eyes, then pulled her in close as they shared a deep kiss. I see you learn fast up I dragon emperor, at her words Drake cringed in embarrassment. So are you going to tease me again or are we gonna be each other's firsts? Issei chuckled at her words, he wanted her but, he wanted Asia to be his first. What does that devil have that I don't in droves? Issei took a breath, history, real, trust me I want you just as much, but history. Yet here I lay warming your bed at night. She said as she caressed the side of his face, then allowed her hand to explore downward. That you are, but I still love her. Issei sighed, and real dropped it along with her hand, she was not in love with him. 
He just had an aura about him, it drew her in like a moth to the flame. She wanted to be consumed by his flame, to see him rise above it all. Her view on the alliance was nothing more than old fools that spent the day just circle jerking themselves into an all-consuming black hole of narcissism. Now was the time for new blood to fill the hole that these ancient deities created. Yes, Trahixa was going to be a constant threat, but nothing has been set in motion or done to actually end that threat. Hell it took Elohim's death to just seal the bloody thing up, yes the fight with the Black Annihilation Dragon Emperor, Bahamut, killed him, but that was the only way to keep Trahixa from destroying the universe. When Issei declared that he was going to wipe them all out, Azazel and her believed he was going to be the one to end Trahixa's reign of terror. One month later since Betrielthi present. Issei was now a full-fledged dragon, gone was his humanity, save the facsimile his human form now was. He had yet to manifest his heavenly dragon form, but it surged just below the surface waiting to be born. Drake could not figure for the life of them why he had not. In truth, not even Issei himself knew why, though an answer buzzed in the back of his mind. For now, however, he had other pressing matters to attend to. His balance breaker forms were now like second nature to him, he just had to think of which form he wanted, and it would manifest upon him. His human form now had a sort of quiet glow now lightly pulsating beneath his skin. Other than that his body was very much the same as say, if it was broken no need to fix it. However his physiology had changed, he was stronger, faster, his reflexes were supernatural, and to top it all off he had full control over it. His intelligence was now enhanced by a factor of 10, due to now being a heavenly dragon and absorbing Azazel's heart. It amazed him how much he accomplished in just over a month. He arrived at Cow Academy to the welcoming party that was Rhea's and her peerage. He could see their demonic auras as blackish red energies originating from their evil king piece and overlaying onto the others. Time seemed to slow down around them as the other students did not seem to notice the barrier being created. So it starts. Issei cracked his neck from side to side, his face was downcast, his hands in his pockets. The barrier then shattered as Issei looked up with a smug hair, hey, today is not good for me, maybe tomorrow, the next day, or whenever the I feel like it. He then drew closer to them, then unleashed his own heavenly dragon aura, consuming the others with impending dread. Their eyes collectively widened as king and queen parted like the Red Sea from his pressure letting the newborn dragon known as Issei, safely walk through both of them and onto class. The pressure he was emitting terrified them. Ara, Ara, that's not just his dragon, Kaichu-sama, Akeno said with a hastened breath. Agreed, something's very wrong here. Rhea's remarked agreeing with her queen. It's almost like he has become part fallen as well. Akeno was now shaking, a very high-ranking one. We need to talk to Azazel. Kiba chimed in, to which the others agreed. The rest of the day went like normal, using his dragon's domination aura on his various enseis, Issei was given all the work he needed to catch up, and by Friday, he would take the trimester exam. Issei, Rias, and company have contacted me. That was Azazel talking through Drake. I have kept them unawares and informed them Kakabiel has gone missing. This would throw them off his scent good on him, this only confirmed his judgment call. Well played Azazel, where are we on saving Asia? He had to free her before he would take on Rias and company. Slowly, unlike you, she does not have a dragon to compensate her life force. Azazel was the best at what he did, Issei knew this to be true, it will get done, on that you have my word, please just be a bit more patient. I believe you, but as you know time is of the essence. Asia was important to him, despite his love for her, her sacred gear was and is still very valuable to his plans. As the day dragged on Issei spent his breaks playing catch up, with his new enhancements it did not take him long at all, and by end of the day, he finished. Walking home he bypassed by Cow Park, figured you'd be first. The sky went dark as a barrier went up concealing them from the public eye. Hiba did not even hesitate going straight for his balance breaker, unleashing his holy demonic sword. Sword of the Betrayer. Issei gave him a smirk, the irony was not lost to him as he went in his own. Scale mail, blocking the blade with his gauntlet. Boost. With a swipe to the right parried the blade, sending Ascalon into another sword. Gram which manifested in Kiba's left hand. Boost. Sending the sword in an upward slash the dragon slayer blade was parried. Boost. Back and forth they go boost. How could you betray us? Kiba accused him. Betray. Issei charged forward knocking Gram away, launching it to the ground behind the night phasing into the ether. Rhea's plan my death. Issei's words catch him off guard. Eagle's talon. At his words he sends his right gauntlet's palm hits Kiba's left side. An energy blade manifests stabbing deep into his lower torso. Blood shoots out of his mouth, the strike was precise missing his vitals and shooting clean through his back. No Kiba looked down at his side, his pupils wide at what just happened to him. Think about Kiba, why were the fallen there? Issei's words echo through the knight's mind. No one enters devil's territory without their consent. Issei removes his hand from Kiba's side in a spray of crimson. 
She wanted me dead, then swoop in like some sort of big titty savior and harvest my gear. I say it as words as say shook in anger, Kibanu. It's not like that. Oh, suppressing a heavenly dragon, then enslaving him, for what Kiba charge slamming his holy demonic sword against Ascalon. To keep the factions in power. You could topple the world. Sparks fly as the two swords go back and forth striking each other trying to destroy one another. Kiba calls back Gram to his hand and stabs it into Issei. And so I shall. Issei grabs Gram with his gauntleted hand. This is mine now. Issei coughs as blood hits Kiba's face drag. Over booster. Issei seems to ignite with the dragon's aura power taken. Demonic Emperor Blade. His right gauntlet begins to glow brightly, as his forearm begins to shift and open. Hidden Blade. Gram explodes and transforms compounding itself, then becoming a slender blade. Kiba tries to retrieve Gram back but is denied. Kiba's eyes widen, then refocus he then summons sword after sword trying to overtake the Red Emperor. Do it now. Agreed. With a thought, Issei is now in his newest balance breaker. Fallen Armor. Kiba stumbles back as he sees 12 wings burst from Issei's back. You are not the only one with an arsenal of blades. With a simple tightening of his shoulders, legions of blades stood at the ready beneath the scale plates of his armor. What? Kiba turns pale, what did you do? Blade storm. Was the last thing Kiba heard as Issei launched the blades off his left side, causing them to rain down on him. The clash of sword and Issei's blades soon gave way to Kiba's screams. The barrier shatters as the knight falls and is left barely alive. It was now evening and they were all alone, too. Issei then left him there bleeding out and made his way to his parents' home. He knocked on the door, hello there, who might you be? Issei's father answered. No dot Issei's mind screamed, he could see her aura around him with his dragon eyes. She had them, now Rias had crossed the line. Huh? Issei played it off as he smiled rubbing the back of his head in jest. Looks like another girl played me sir. His father chuckled, then shook his head in understanding, with that Issei left his home. What are you planning partner? I am going make a point dot with that, he made a magic circle then vanished. 4. L. Outside the Gremory estate. Issei appeared above the estate as wrath boiling wildly I, who am about to awaken. Drake takes notice as his own blood began to stir. Are you sure? Issei was not stopping. I am the heavenly dragon who has stolen the principles of domination from God. Issei? Drake was getting excited with each chant. I laugh at the infinite and I grieve at the dream. Thus we are doing this. I shall become the red dragon of domination and I shall sink you to the depths of the crimson purgatory. Yes. Juggernaut drive. With that Drake and Issei's roar rang throughout the bowels of hell as he began to transform. Below buildings shook and alarms rang out as devils gathered arms. Inside the Gremory estate, Sersiches held on to his chair as his compound shook and heavy rafters gave way. The devil is going on here. A window shattered revealing Issei in full on drive. Hear me Lord Sersiches Lucifer. Issei and Drake spoke as one as, traitors all of you. In a flash, the Satan was instantly in front of the horror before him. So you come to face your judgment. Issei what is the meaning of this Sersiches ordered only for Issei to roar in defiance. You had me killed, you bastard. Issei roared as the Lord's eyes widened. Now that crimson bitch has my parents charmed and held hostage. Issei roared again, his wrath boiling, then suddenly time stopped. Thump. I will show you no quarter. He was rabid drowning in his own wrath. Thump. Thump. I will bring your house crashing down around and atop you. Issei roared in utter defiance of the great Satan. Thump. 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 Serzichas was paralyzed in fear as the juggernaut drive began to shake the area around them, as the pressure he was emitting began to increase. What, what are you doing? Serzichas ignited the power of destruction as his body exploded with power. Ruin the extinct. At the Satan's words, a giant crimson sphere surrounds Issei with sparks of destructive bolts striking him. You arrogant dragons are all the same. Serzichas proclaimed clenching his fist condensing the ball of destruction. You would unmake the universe if you were to remain unchecked. The ball compressed to Lissay was completely immobilized, the bolts of destructive energy struck and crashed against his juggernaut armor. Now die again. Inside Issei's mindscape, Drake and Issei stood face to face the ladders with tears in their eyes. The realization of what was about to occur just struck Issei. No. That buzzing thought that always laid in the back of his mind was now front and center. He said through bitter tears, I have lost so much, please no. Drake took a breath as tears began to fall from his eyes as he approached him and took human form. He was dressed in a crimson pinstripe suit with a black tie attached to his blood-red dress shirt. You really love that color huh Issei wiped his eyes, stupid overgrown lizard. He says between sobs. You look like a strawberry pimp. Drake chuckled at the comparison. Outside Serzich's power continues to beat against him, he barely feels it as he focuses on the man before him. This has to be done, partner. 
Drake's voice was now soft as he embraced his host, holding him close to his dot his voice did not echo, as it usually did for now his partner was equal to him. Never have I had a host such as you, my dear boy. Issei looked up at Drake, his face was that of an older gentleman, his face tan and weathered from so many battles and wars. His hair surprisingly was brown like Issei's only short and combed back with small tails of silver. You have surpassed all my expectations my dreams everything. Drake pulled him in and kissed the top of his head as Issei held on to him for dear life. You are more than worthy of my power Issei Hayadu. Issei looked into Drake's emerald green eyes, they glowed with power revealing the powerful heavenly dragon behind them. I am so proud of you boy. His eyes flowed with prideful tears. Please, I need you, I don't Issei gave in bawling into the heavenly dragon's dot. You never will, I will always be here, right by your side Drake took a quivering breath, hidden deep within your dragon heart, it will beat in sync with my own, as you soar far beyond the heavens. Drake gently stroked his host's hair as he continued to cry. Drake's form began to shimmer and glow, now I who hath stolen the principles of domination from God. The heavenly dragon, Drake, who laughed at the infinite and grieved the dream. From his core a bright light ignite slowly consuming him, willingly give my life for you Issei Hayadu, who shall become the true red dragon of domination, and shall sink your foes into the depths of the crimson purgatory. Drake's light explodes consuming them both illuminating the darkness. Edraig. Issei calls out. Take my final gift, use it as your heart desires. Drake suddenly returned to his dragon form exploding in a flash of glorious light. Issei continued to call out Drake's name as the light shimmered, then shot into him. I will always be with you, even until the end of time. With his final words, Issei's consciousness returned to Hell's domain. Outside Issei's mindscape, Hell begins to shake, lightning flashes as it takes out various buildings around the Gremory estate. The bolts resound in a cacophony that could only come from a dragon's birth. From this consuming fire, I will step into my destiny. Serzich's quakes in all-consuming terror as the ruin of extinct sphere cracks with flames shooting outward. From my pain, it will be forged into my fury and be reborn. The sphere explodes as Issei shoots into the sky into the growing tempest above them. The swirling maelstrom swallows him whole, as the lightning takes a life of its own, striking down all those who would prevent what was about to occur. A flash in a cloud reveals Issei growing, transforming, another flash, and the shadow of his twelve wings merge back into two massive ones. The roar of pain comes from that of loss and betrayal. A third flash, a long neck rises, followed by another roar of that calling out for vengeance. The clouds are consumed in red-orange flames as arms and legs shoot out with black and red scales and golden claws that shake with all-consuming power. I will bring your world to its knees. Issei roars as his massive red tail with blackened scales pierces through the cloud's inferno. I am the dragon of domination instantly every devil that was in the air crashes to the ground, along with the great Satan Serzich's Lucifer. It is at my name you all will bow. Issei's voice roars overriding every sentient being around him sending them to their knees. His dragon form was fully exposed now, his wings were 175 meters fully spread out. They were red with blackened scales with a membrane of deep gold. His body was more slender than that of Drake's. The bulk of his muscle was in his back, shoulders, and front arms. His back legs were powerful making him swift and agile. From his serpentine neck and head to his tail, he was 158 meters long covered with the same black and red scales. Golden spikes were adorned in two rows in a V-pattern, going the full length of his neck, spine, and ending at the tip of his whip-like tail. From his chin to his tail black and golden mithril armor folded in on itself protecting the underside of his body. Issei lifts his head swallowing the roaring tempest clearing the sky, exposing the light shining down into hell. After gathering it within him he unleashes it behind the humble devils who are too terrified to look upon him. Buildings explode or get obliterated in his fire's wake. Finally, after making his point he lands in a great earthquake in front of Serzich's and returns to his human form. Without hesitation, he grabs the great Satan by his wings, ripping them from his back. Serzich's screams but is silenced as Issei snatches his voice away grabbing his throat. Issei's eyes now resemble that of a dragon's, their eyes are a gradient of his original amber to Drake's emerald green. Call her, Issei said through gritted fangs, now. His voice now echoed with the authority of the heavenly dragon he now was. 5. How? Hide you mansion. The rest of the world felt what they believed to be a massive earthquake. On the TV the newscast was already giving out tsunami watches for most of Japan's Pacific coast. In Issei's room, Ria's and her peerage shared the terror that was now gripping hell itself. In the bed was a broken kiba, he was healing, but slowly, even with Akeno and Asia's healing magic, it seemed helpless. It was Zenovia who found him in Cow Park broken and bloody. He was unconscious with one foot in the grave already, and the other heading for a banana peel. The scent of her former pawn broke her as all her past sins hit her all at once. Her own anger buried deep within, it was then she increased her hold on Issei's parents. 
She did not forgive, nor was she going to let a former pawn beat her. Dry weak voice called out as a magic circle manifested suddenly in front of them. Sister. Ani Sama. Ria's answered her mind going a thousand miles an hour. Release them Surzichas gasped, she could only hear her beloved brother's voice, for he was too weak to give a visual. No. Surzichas knew what she was thinking, Ria release them and flee. Ria's could not believe what she was hearing, take your peerage with you and flee. Ani Sama her heart was breaking, I will destroy. You will do nothing of the sort. His voice rang out to a chorus of gasps from the king and her peerage. The heavenly of dragon of domination has returned. That means that bastard Asay is dead. No. Surzichas cut her off. No Ria. The next words that came from her brother's lips filled them all with terror beyond their imagination. Isay is the heavenly dragon. The magic circle explodes revealing hell to be a literal hellscape, its once lush fields were now turned to ash. Her home in ruins, Ria's could not breathe as she along with her peerage took it all in. Suddenly their eyes collectively shook as they saw the great Satan on his knees, his back bleeding where his wings once were. Issei stood behind her brother surrounded by other devils on their knees prostrating before him. Please Riaz, release them. Suddenly Azazel and his troops teleport in much to Riaz's relief. Azazel. She called out, Ani Sama I'm safe. Riaz set them free and flee I beg of you. Riaz held back her tears as she did as he requested. Flee now. Alright let's go, this is not over Issei. She then looked at Azazel who just smiled. Before she could do anything real came from behind her grabbing then ensnaring Rias in anti-magic chains. What they are you doing? Several more fallen appeared securing the rest of her peerage. Target secured my lord. Azazel looked towards Issei. Traitor. She roared as Real and her company kicked out their legs, sending them to their knees. Hello Kettle, I'm Pot. Issei replied with venom in his voice through the magic circle feed. Rias replied with a cursed hiss as she saw her beloved brother turn his head to him. There I did what asked. Issei nodded assuring Surzichas, no more, please. It was over, he was defeated, he only prayed that his sister would be spared. Indeed. Issei then manifested his fallen armor balance breaker, no more. No. Ria screamed as Issei slammed his fists to either side of Surzichas' head exploding it before cutting the feet. I told you I am going to take everything from you. Ria's was wailing in agony and burned it to ash. The magic circle then exploded overwhelming Ria's cries as she brought her head to the floor wailing her brother's name. The devils around Issei were powerless as they saw their beloved leader's head explode, sending the grey matter upon them. With a mighty stomp Issei sent them face down as they wailed in grief and horror. Surzich's body laid headless and in a pool of his own warm crimson liquid. Issei remained silent as his indentured devils continued to cry out in mourning. Explosion. His words were but a whisper as his body began to glow, then compressed and unleashed his overboosted energy. The explosion consumed the remainder of Grimory Estate, along with its objects completely leveling the area. Zero survivors. Haidu Mansion, the next day. Ria's had collapsed and was rendered comatose as she bore witnessed her family estate and home being wiped from the map. Issei stepped out of a magic circle to see Ria's peerage retreat with fear of him. He spots Kiba in his bed, without hesitation, dragon shot. One burst of energy later Kiba was no more along with his bed. The remainder of Ria's peerage could not even scream from what they just beheld. Asia. Issei said her name as she yelped in response with a wave of his hand he set her free. What did you do? Asia cried out, she wanted to strike him, but her body was frozen in place. Why? Betrayal. Issei said his voice going off as a steel trap. We meant nothing to them. No, I, I don't believe you. Asia cried out to which he turned to face her fully. You killed Kiba, Surziches, those devils. And they planned our deaths, think back, remember our reincarnations, remember what Surziches said. Asia's eyes quivered in fear, no one can enter a devil's territory without invitation. No. Asia said as she looked at the people of Rhea's peerage. They wanted power, Issei's words struck her hard. To use us to fuel their war machine. Asia clutched her as she saw the one she considered family looked away verifying Issei's accusations. Tell me he's lying. She demanded to which Azazel coughed getting her attention. Azazel please. I came up with a plan with Issei, Surzichas with a plan for you. Azazel replied as Asia dropped to her knees tears filling her eyes. I'm Asia moved quickly and slapped the seraph breaking her hand. She then healed herself as Issei kneeled before her. She looks at him, her eyes trembling filling with mixed emotions. Fear, anger, sadness, surrender. Asia, how did you expect me to react? Issei placed his arms around her, they deceived and enslaved us, binding us to those evil pieces. Asia was still shaking his head, she could not accept the truth. With quick motion, Azazel slammed a green orb into her back which ejected her evil piece. Asia's eyes widen as the bishop's evil piece hit the ground covered in her own blood. Asia's scared gear activated going into overdrive, the orb shattered healing her completely. She survived. Pandemonium, Hell's capital. 
Seraph all of Iathan, Ajuk of Beelzebub, Falbium Asmodeus, the three remaining great Satans gathered in the Great Hall of the Capitol, mentioned in the epic Paradise Lost. This was Pandemonium, and Beelzebub's home, its dark halls and gothic pillars, dwarfed the three leaders of Hell itself. A great oval table was before the magic circles displayed Hell's entire realm. Border lines in each of the leader's clan colors, Grimory's territory was leveled, and now a barren wasteland. This is madness. Beelzebub began, he is nigh unstoppable. We did try, well, did enslave him. Leviathan sighed brushing off the ruler of hell. Indeed, who would have believed he would survive my evil pieces? The ruler mused, he could not help but be impressed with a say. It seems not even we could change fate. Asmodeus added, now we have most likely only hastened it, and ours the other great satans turned their attention to the bald leader. For the next four hours, the great satans discussed in detail their next actions. 6. I do mansion. Asia had secluded herself into one of the various guest rooms, leaving only Akeno, Zenovia, Gasper, and Kaneko alone with a very pissed off essay. Even though Zenovia was new she had been let in on the Grimory secret and chose to hide it away. She concluded it was the best course of action by the three factions, so long as she could use Issei as her personal sperm bank there, the factions, reasoning was irrelevant. Issei looked onto the people before him, his rage was boiling over at this point. Asper suddenly flashed his eyes stopping time, hurry. Get out of here. The others looked at one another for a moment then back at Gasper. Get Kaichu-sama and flee. Gasper suddenly gasped as he saw Issei's eyes following their every move. Aspi we won't leave you. Kaneko shouts as Gasper shakes his head. We leave too. No, I have to stay here. Gasper points at Issei, you won't make it if I don't, go flee. The others see magical cracks as Gasper refocuses sealing them. Hurry. With bloody tears, Gasper makes his final stand as the others rush to the other room grabbing Rias and escaping. They escape via magic circle, just as they see Gasper's power shatter in purple and blue magical shards. Gasper. Kaneko calls out as she hears his screams and then teleports out. They arrive at their club building and fall to their collective knees, crying out the little vampire's name over and over. Back at the mansion moments before, Issei now in his fallen balance breaker armor, shatters through Gasper's defenses. The little vampire screams but is cut off as Issei grabs his throat and slams him against a wall. So brave, I'm proud of you Gasper. The vampire struggles in vain as Issei holds him in place. I want to be mad, but I feel nothing but overwhelming pride with you Gasper. He releases him with a drop, ward cancel. He says shattering the magic circle Gasper tried to make. The vampire looks at Issei and begins to glow. Ara, Ara. Issei then drops his armor as Gasper dashes forward in a flash as time slows to a crawl. Issei sees him turn, his mouth opens as he smiles feeling a rush of pride overwhelm him. Ah you bastard. Gasper latches onto his neck biting down hard piercing Issei's neck with his fangs. Boost. Issei's body pulsates suddenly, Gasper's eyes widen, boost. Gasper is then launched off his enemy and is splattered on a wall upside down. The blood splatter behind him formed an upside down cross. Before Gasper could free himself Issei went back into his fallen armor and launches three blades out of his shoulders, nailing Gasper's wrists and through both his feet embedding him in. Issei slowly walks toward the now crucified Gasper. He kneels before him tears flowing from his eyes as he gently touches his face. I was hoping you could take some of my power big guy. I'm sorry Ani-chan, so, so sorry you did not deserve what happened to you. Gasper coughed up blood as Issei called back his blades and caught him as he fell. I wanted to be brave. You were Gasper, so brave. Remorse filled his voice, he wanted to save him, but the vampire shook his head no. Rest now little brother, my brave and mighty little brother. Issei held on to him till he passed clutching his body with sorrowful tears. You will not be forgotten. Issei said as Gasper turned bright then was absorbed into Issei's body. Soul and power taken, vampire's requiem. He said to himself, he now could stop time through the use of the sacred gear. Forbidden Baylor view. As Issei looked at his empty hands as light red almost pink like tears streamed down his face. My dear Gasper, I am so sorry, I didn't it was not supposed to be this painful. Issei was not talking about Gasper, but himself. His memories with the effeminate young vampire bishop filled his mind. Gasper and Issei were, as he said, close as brothers, Issei taking the role of Ani Chan or big brother. He protected him just as fervently, if not more than the other girls in the peerage. Now, he killed him, he convinced himself that he was part of her world, he needed to die. He knew he wasn't a victim like Asia no, he knew her plan her betrayal. No matter how hard he tried the weight killing his dear little brother caused him to mournfully roar. His roar was loud and shook the foundations of his family mansion as the walls began to crack. The roof then began to collapse upon him as his roar continued to ring out. Soon the whole mansion is destroyed leaving Issei in the center untouched in a new balance breaker. Vampire Lord. He looked like a dark reddish purple paladin with a long crimson cape with elegant golden embroidering in the shape of drag. 
The cape was attached to brass clasps that had engraved vampire faces smiling evilly. His shoulder pads were huge and attached to mithril plated and torso armor. His arms were covered in mithril chain mail, ending in his boosted gear gauntlets. At his sides were segmented leg skirts, underneath them the mithril theme continued onto his leg armor and boots. Issei wore no helm, but his skin seemed to be pale, his face became very slender his teeth, namely his canines became fangs sharper than when he was in dragon form. His hair went from a wild unkempt look to straight and waist long. ORC building, the remainder of Rhea's peerage once again were faced tragedy with the death of Gaspar. Rhea's came to and was told what happened, power surged from deep within her. Before Akeno and the others could stop her she was gone. Back at the now Hayadu ruins. Issei looked up as he saw Rhea's coming her power blazing with murderous intent. Faster than she could stop herself Issei disappears as she strikes the ground creating a large crater. Rhea's looks around then up, she pauses a moment. Issei disappears then reappears grabbing her throat. I shouldn't have killed him. Rhea slammed her fist into his armored torso, releasing her destructive power. The armor absorbs the energy. You caused this Rias. At his word she took his other hand and exposed her neck. Rias could not move because Issei had stopped time freezing her in place. Her eyes widen as he bit her and drank her blood. Time returned as Rias' body went limp in his grasp. Her destructive aura began to flow into him as he continued to drink her in. But the violent rip he tore out her neck dropping her, that's four. Vampire Lord could steal another devil's power, it then gave him a choice to make her power his own or use it to extend his life. He chose the latter, with that, your lineage is gone. He then used a greater healing spell restoring her, she immediately attacked, but noticed something to her own horror. No. Rias did not want to believe it. I declawed you devil and no I do not have it. Rias eyes widened in horror, but my life is vastly extended. Rias started to look around, freeze. She suddenly froze as time once again stopped. I curse you, your life is now linked to mine. He began, you will live until I say you can die. Time returned to normal, as Rias grabbed an iron bar and stabbed herself through her dot. She collapsed to the ground within moments she was revived only to cough up blood. The iron bar was still inside her, only healed over. Issei then grabbed the bar and ripped it out of her killing her once more. Once again Rias was revived, she just looked up at the man who cursed her. Try as much as you want you will not die bitch. He then took to the air leaving her alone screaming at him in utter sorrow. Moments before the mansion collapsed. A magic circle opened up where Asia was hiding. She was terrified as the building shook and began to become unmade. The roar was loud and did not seem to end, it was the cause of this terror that now gripped her. Azazel stepped out calling to her, Asia. His shout snapped her out of whatever bewitching she was under. I am over here. She called out to him, he suddenly appeared and she batted away his hand. You traitorous bastard. Azazel took a slap to his face to which he just rolled his eyes in response. I'd rather Azazel covered her mouth with chloroform and within seconds she was knocked out. Sorry child, but this is not up for debate. He then picked her up in a fireman's carry and stepped through the magic circle. Moments later the mansion was no more. 7. The Grigori. Azazel arrived an hour before Issei, after he set Asia up in one of the Grigori's many rooms, he placed Real as her guard. She was not all too pleased with the order, but in truth she feared Issei more than her petty reservations on his latest concubine. He loves you, none. She spat as Asia was coming too. He killed Kiba, and from the scream, I heard Gasper too. Asia spat back her venom matching that of Real. He can go to hell. And probably rule it better than the true Lucifer ever did. Real brushed her off with arrogant dismissal. You heard his reasoning none, your precious red-haired tramp put a hit on him and you. What about her words failed her as she recalled what Issei told her. He killed them, why did he do that? Tears were welling up in her eyes, why didn't he just take her? Real was trying to compose herself resisting the unbridled urge to slap the taste out of her mouth. She used Rainer on purpose, that whore loved to destroy people like him, the venerable, innocent. Asia gave her a look on the last part. So what if he liked to perv on women, Issei would never go beyond that, and you damn well know it. Asia huffed and looked away in agreement. He's strong, not because of what he is now, but morally, believe me, I tried to break him, but she began to feel her own tears, he will not give in he loves you saving himself. Real clenched and popped her fists. You mean? Real nodded her head, I thought Rias. Real shook her head, the fallen had fallen for him in a bad way. Issei, when he started purging his evil pieces all he thought was to save you to set you free you, stupid nun. I'm not she then remembered she was no longer a devil, Azazel's device returned her to her humanity. Worship got me nothing but death and slavery. Real snapped back to attention at her words. None, never again, devils, angels, fallen all warring for what exactly, a reign that would only be over the dead in the end. Asia looked at the box that held the crucifix she would hold so dear. Issei wants to change that, to reform this world, this universe, to one that is finally in peace. Real did not care if it would be a boring world. 
No conflict, no war, a utopian paradise to live one's life peaceful and free of the influences of the one before it. Cause this current one, as lost to the old ones is narcissism and greed. The old ones she was talking about were the current three factions warmongering for power, superiority, with not a single or secondary thought to those truly unaware of the supernatural. Humans. All the while proclaiming they were trying to prevent the apocalypse, Trahiksa, blah blah, any sort of bullshit to justify the systematic genocide they were causing against the innocent. In truth there was no alliance, evil faction to fight against. It was a ing free for all, with each participant with agendas upon agendas to over their allies, as soon as victory was assured. If that meant the small, humans, would get the shaft and fund this madness with their blood and not that of their betters, so be it. Essay is the answer, finally some ing justice in this godforsaken insanity. With her words Asia made her decision, Essay saved her, though it hurt her what happened to their family. No, they all knew what Rias did and willingly went along with her. She held on to this as Issei did, the truth, they were tools manipulated and lulled into attachment, and to love their evil king peace. Real saw the transformation in her charge's eyes, she now belonged to her lover. Soon she would have her own desire fulfilled. Issei's arrival at the Grigori and was met by several different colored magic circles surrounding the fortress via the sky and ground level. Azazel clasped forearms with his lord welcoming him, and then bringing him into a war room he just set up. We expected this Issei. Azazel opened up and with a wave of his hand the Grigori's castle defenses went up. Along the outer wall of the fortress, celestial cannons manifested and hummed to life. Go into scale mail and place your hand here. A magic orb flashed and appeared in front of them. But the thought Issei did as Azazel asked, boost. He called out as his words repeated and began to overlap each other in a loud chant. Outside the first wave of the combine great Satan's forces exited their magic circles. Inside Azazel had just finished calibrating and targeting. Over booster. Yeah baby eat this. Azazel rang out as the celestial cannon signaled that they were locked on. Now Issei. Explosion. Issei's power surged through the orb overcharging the cannons then firing. All at once the power was condensed, then unleashed its bounty annihilating the first wave and vaporizing the magic circles. Boost. The system needs recharging hold off on that Azazel held out his hand, keep boosting they are no doubt regrouping. Then let's take out Leviathan. Issei ordered, Azazel backtracked the pink magic circles to their origin. He then nodded his head to Issei sending him the coordinates. I'm taking a strike force, let me know when the second wave is en route. Azazel understood as Issei left the room quickly gathering squad after squad of fallen. In a flash he had his forces and exited via magic circle. Azazel rechecked his equipment, all green just needed to recharge. The governor general then unleashed his 12 wings, signaling his elite guard to follow. Give the enemy no quarter, let's finish off the stragglers. He then leapt into the air, then divabumed off the fortress wall followed by his guard. Their collective battle cry echo throughout the area. The remnants of the first wave, now demoralized, engaged the overwhelming forces in vain. The Silver City, Heaven, Michael and his closest advisors beheld the carnage via magic circle projection. They watched as the first wave of a combined hell force was completely and utterly wiped off the map. Some angels felt empathy for them, the vast majority of the rest, including Michael, did not. Lord Commander he's slaughtering them. Trina, one of Issei's childhood friends, called out to the current ruler of Heaven. He said nothing his face with the same heavenly empty smile just looked on his Azazel and his men laid waste to the remaining first wave. Are we Michael turned his head stopping her dead in her tracks. He then closed his eyes and smiled big, we will do no such thing dear, now please be silent half-breed. He then turned to his top brass, now is the time to bolster our ranks. They all nodded save Trina, those savages are occupied with the heavenly dragon trash and his blasphemers. Trina could not believe what she was hearing. This was never gonna last, and that disgusting truce only served to castrate our forces. He then chuckled to himself which erupted into full-blown laughter, this caused a chain reaction with the others who joined in the Lord Commander's bellowing. Be swift, harvest our gun fodder, kill, manipulate, force those wretched humans and get me my numbers. In truth Michael never cared much less loved mankind, God's worst creation. All they did was squabble over this piece or that piece of imaginary power. Free will, what a joke, if let to their own devices they would breed and eat each other to death. What right did they have to exist, they were flawed, intentionally made that way by Elohim's own eccentricities. What? A joke. I got it. Tell them it's the rapture, and they have been conscripted to fight in God's upcoming battle for their very souls. At this Trina burst into tears, she could not believe this was how Michael really was. What is a matter child? Rejoice for you have been bestowed the honor of sacrifice. The whole time Michael's voice never faltered in tone, he really made it sound beautiful. No ego, anger, or tell of anything else but a pleasant joy. The other angels rang out in glorious chorus of praise to their Lord Commander. Great is he who comes in the name of our Lord, O Michael, O Michael, O Michael. 
The hymn sickened Trina to her core, her blonde drell style twin tails swayed to and fro. She wanted to vomit as Michael accepted their worship his light beaming. 8. Dust outside Leviathan territory. A small strike platoon of the great Satan Leviathan was readying themselves for the second wave. Suddenly a red magic circle appeared above them, at arms men. This was Ari one of the Leviathan clan's generals commanded her men. She was short 5'4", but her aura commanded respect of all. She was dressed as a small knight in Leviathan pink, with gold and silver trim on the tunic she was wearing. Issei shot out of the circle touching down in the middle of the platoon, clearing a massive circle. Issei was in his scale mail balance breaker, dominate. The new heavenly dragon proclaimed with a mighty stomp. Instantly the devils were sent to their knees surrounding him as they knelt. Issei then switched to vampire lord his face and eyes morphing into slender angles and a sharp outline of his face. Issei's eyes flashed, forbidden baler view. Enthralling glare. He commanded as the entire platoon's eyes went from their normal yellowish hue to magenta. They were now his to command, Ari watch on in horror as Issei overrides their wills and then turns to her. Before she could charge Issei raised his hand and time froze. Slowly and methodically he walked towards the general his eyes never losing focus. Ari could only watch in horror as he gently tilted her neck exposing it to him. You have information I need this will be quick. Tears filled her eyes as her powers failed her again and again to free her from this monster's grasp. I surrender the general cried out in her mind, Issei paused sensing something. Please, I surrender. Her mind was screaming as Issei released her from being froze, she then fell to her knees and offered him her sword showing her submission and subjugation. Your will be done. She said through bitter tears, she had just betrayed her clan. Issei was about to take Eri's sword when she suddenly grabbed the hilt and slashed upward. She decapitated Issei in one slash catching the red dragon emperor's head as a fountain of blood shot out of his neck hole like a geyser. She then stood up head in hand and laughed at the stupidity of it all. Suddenly her laughter was joined by the heads. She then looked down watching Issei's insane laughter, I am the heavenly dragon who took the principles of domination from God. He no longer needed to say the chant, but the dramatics of it would always demoralize his enemies. Ari was no exception as Issei's head turned to dust and seemed to blow away and back to his now kneeling body. His body then slammed its fists into the ground and started to transform, it was now on all fours as his body and armor cracked and snapped into place. I shall sink you to the depths of the crimson purgatory. The dust then took shape of the dragon's head. Ari fell back, she tried to use her magic circle to send out and sows, but the fallen already blocked communication magic. Juggernaut drive. She tried groveling, but it was already too late for mercy. Issei was fully willing to give her amnesty when she surrendered, but she decapitated him. The dragon's head then began to become more angular and narrow, its fangs, specifically his canines, became elongated. Ari was still looking on in horror as she suddenly turned to crawl away trying to reach a sprint. With swift movement he stabbed one of his wing spines through her back. She cried out as he brought her to his mouth. Suddenly the leviathan general seemed like a little girl frightened by her imaginary bujiman. However, this was not no mere specter of her imagination, it was quite real, very 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 real. She desperately fired off various energy blasts and magical constructs at the horror before her to no avail. Issei proved to her just how outclassed she truly was. You do not really get it do you general. Issei's voice echoed filled with overwhelming power with each word he spoke. PP please mercy I beg of you. She pleaded as her own blood dripped from her mouth. No bitch. Issei said taking the echo out of his voice. I am the most op heavenly dragon that ever existed next to Great Red, Orphis, and Bahamut. I'll serve you, offer myself to you, I am pure untouched by anyone male or female. She did not want to die, not like this, alone. Issei roared in response her bargaining offers were, to say the least, insulting. Red Dragon Emperor, please, I beg of you. You take me for some foolish lolican. Issei ripped her from his wing spike, sending hot crimson liquid into the air. Heal. She then glowed the green energy sealing her wounds, only for her bones to be crushed in his hand. She screamed out in pain in his powerful grip. Need information. Her eyes became white as she shook her head yes. Anything my emperor. Thanks but I will be taking it from the source. With his final words his mouth opened as Ares' pupils went wide as he tossed her in the air and caught her by the torso in his mouth. He bit down, no blood was wasted in a massive explosion, no, instead he drained her dry extending his life force. Her blood is sweet, balanced, flawless, this must be why vampires love virgin blood. Suddenly his mind was flooded with her every memory, every passion, every desire, goal, and her love. It was a boy, Mitsuda. He saw her first encounter with him, she had to go to the bathroom while passing through Cow. It was at a shopping mall, Mitsuda had gone to the wrong bathroom absentmindedly and stumbled into her stall. She socked him one finished up and was about to end him. But when she got out he was on the ground begging for her forgiveness. He explained what happened and she let him go, but she was taken by him. 
Fast forward, she could never gather the courage to see him again that close. Then the orders from her clan made her steal her resolved, she was going to confess to him after all this madness. But Suda, damn, I cannot do my boy like that. He had what he needed from her and the ability to create the Leviathan magic circle. Issei returned to his scale male form and manifested dragon fire in his hand. Fury, reborn. He merged it with Eri's body, her eyes shot open breathing in the fire and returning her soul back to herself. Eri landed in front of Issei kneeling before him her armor had changed into dragon scale armor, it was black and red like his dragon form, but maintained accents of the Leviathan pink clan, identifying her origin. I am yours to command, ravish me if you so wish. She said trying to hide the tears in her voice. She wanted to save herself for her Mitsuda, but she realized that was no longer going to happen. She knew Issei was a pervert at heart from her observations of Kao Academy. I told you I am not a lolican, you will enroll in Kao Academy, what you do after that is up to you. Her eyes lit up as she looked at her, so long as you are loyal to me, follow your heart, betray me again, and I will take everything from you, then bury you alive. Her heart leapt even though clearly threatened, go, leave my sight till I call you. He was not going to until his final push, he then blocked her thoughts from his own with the caveat that if she was going to betray him or cause him harm, her thoughts would be known to him immediately. Eri then vanished in a magic circle, leaving hell behind. Issei then looked at the his enthralled army as an evil smirk rose from his lips. He quickly went back into Juggernaut Drive and made the Leviathan magic circle. Before entering he began boosting his scared gear, charging up his long Ina smasher. Almed Baba Bathra, Leviathan clan capital, Zerafol Leviathan stood addressing her army when the she saw the magic circle. I thought everyone was here she eyed the circle and inspected its etching from where she was standing, that's Eri, why did she not just call me she was used to her antics, but they were at war. Wait did something happen as she closed her thoughts. Long Inus smasher. Suddenly a blast of magical energy shot out of the magic circle, obliterating half her troops. She leapt to the side, but the blast took her right arm. Her army was in chaos, as more magic circles all bearing the leviathan colors and crest, began to open up. From the sky swarms of fallen emptied their light weapons onto the chaos below. From the ground, the legion of men under Ares' command engaged their own brethren. Traitors. Seraphil roared out, how could you betray us? Her voice filled with grief as she dashed forward engaging the turncoats. She grabbed one, no, her face twisted in utter horror as she saw the tears in the soldier's magenta eyes. That monster. The turncoats knew what they were doing fully aware but unable to stop themselves. The dragon emperor's hold was vastly superior to their own willpower. Issei. Seraphil roared as the heavenly dragon calmly walked out of the circle he then shifted to his balance breaker. Scale male armor. It was now just an extension of his human base form, Leviathan spots him tearing through her ranks to reach him. Issei stopped as soon as he saw her opening his arms welcoming her challenge. She roared calling out for her Celsius cross trigger, in an instant the battlefield froze over. Issei laughed at the irony as he jumps a few feet off the ground hovering. Dragon shot. Issei bellowed as he fired a blast from his right palm, Leviathan then teleported to dodge, then appears in front of Issei with a frozen dagger in a makeshift ice prosthetic arm and hand. She went to strike stabbing into Issei's left shoulder, she broke it off and parried his hidden blade with a frozen stiletto. You enchanted my men. She roared as the stiletto was brought into an uppercut slash. Issei pulled back as the tip of the blade scraped his right cheek. The embedded dagger had melted and shattered as Issei reached for her wrist, grabbing it with his gauntleted hand. He spun her around and slammed her to the ground. He stomped her right ice arm shattering it under heel. The leader of Clan Leviathan then shot ice stakes from her back impaling Issei long enough to free herself. She was not using her fire magic simply because she knew Issei would be immune as she then reformed her right arm. Issei then let out a whisper. Divide. Leviathan's arm shattered as she stumbled backwards. Half dimension. At his words, she took a kneel at the sudden power loss. Issei then charged sending his fist into the side of her jaw, divide. Leviathan was then sent tumbling backwards, but Issei would not let up. Another strike this time to her, divide. Her ribs gave way and her sternum cracked as he embedded her into the ground in a crater. Jaden, Tassa, Hote, Naka Leviathan. Seraphel began as her eyes began to glow as she repeated her chant, Naka Leviathan, Avenue, Rege, Leviathan. Issei was then blasted back off of her. Jaden, Tassa, Hote, Naka Leviathan Seraphel continued to chant, but now she said it with a hiss. Purple and pink energies began to surround her, then consume her. I am the serpent of the end. The light began to take shape of an enormous sea serpent, Avenue Rege Leviathan. The dark light bursts revealing the monster it was hiding. From head to tail the monster known as the serpent of the end. Leviathan was 110 meters. Down the center of her head to about a quarter way down her neck to where the spine begins, were poison tip spikes, from her nostrils, four stinger-filled tentacles each at least 20 meters long flailed in the air. 
Her mouth had two set of fangs on the top and bottom of her jaw. Her eyes were of the color of the deepest and pinkest sapphires. Her body was long with bluish-pink iridescent scales on and along the top and sides with hardened diamond-like plates protecting her underside. Though on land she could still move, but thanks to half-dimension and divide, she could not summon a magical stream to which she could use to swim along the air currents. The roar was loud that ended in a warble-like hiss, Issei had to wonder, could the other great satans do this or was it just Leviathan? For now he would have to worry about that later, as Seraphal lunged at him striking the ground from which he dodged. Issei forgot about her tail as it struck whipping him across the icy terrain. Seraphel was not going to let up as she slithered and skated across the ice, making a beeline for her target. Fallen and enthralled devils threw themselves at her attacking her blindly. Each strike batting droves of enemies off of herself and launching them for what seemed miles. Her heart sank as she was forced to attack her own people. I will not forgive you for this atrocity. She cried as she launched another squad of her enthralled people. Issei watched as she did her best not to bring too much harm to her soldiers. Her warble-like mournful roars echoed through the barren icy plains. Finally Issei had had enough and commanded his forces to fall back. Leviathan took the bait. With a vengeful hiss, she slithered with the force of a locomotive. You forget your place. Since becoming a dragon Issei had become arrogant to his power, a side effect all dragons faced. Issei then slammed his fists on after another into the ground, his human form began to erupt, as pieces of his facsimile body's fleshy anatomy burst like boils. As Leviathan drew closer Issei continued to morph into his true heavenly dragon form. Leviathan tackles the heavenly dragon of domination biting into his neck only for her fangs to shatter against his scales and mirthral under armor. She had weakened the armor, but had not pierced it to which Issei launched into the air with her in tow. His claws slashed against her leaving deep scratches, but did not touch the soft flesh underneath. The serpent of the end released her hold as both roared in contempt of each other. Issei tilted his head to bite down only to hit the poison spine, as she pulled her head down suddenly. The soft flesh of Issei's mouth had been pierced and her toxins injected. His vision blurred as he threw the massive serpent away from him. Leviathan could not fly in this form, nor could she not risk going back to her devil form. If she did she would not be able to invoke her chant again. It was all or nothing. Issei shook his head what was this venom he had just received, his body was getting stiffer, his breathing labored, it was like a sort of tetrodotoxin causing semi-paralysis. Boost. Issei commanded, but not much of anything happened. He tried a healing spell, but only his physical damage was restored. With a great boom. He fell to the ground in a heap. Leviathan was no worse for wear, the impact from that height shattered a few of her ribs and pierced something inside. Although evidence to the contrary, she was not a dragon, her stamina and other attributes were extremely high, but she still was just a devil, granted she was a pure blood, but a devil nonetheless. Leviathan warbled in pain trying to will herself up to finish off this insufferable well calling himself the heavenly dragon of domination. Issei lay dormant the toxin taking its course, he was defenseless. Around him his enthralled and fallen soldiers surrounded him protecting him from harm. Come and get up. They both told themselves as they once again failed to move. Greg what do I do? Issei said to himself, he wished he could hear his friend again. He's just right there I can end him. Leviathan hissed, but every move caused her immeasurable pain. She was bleeding from various parts of her body and out of her mouth. Common Seraphel get up. What do I know, I cannot move, but I can access my magic. Issei's mind was going through scenarios and theories. It's in my bloodstream, okay. He was trying to formulate a plan. Heat maybe. Suddenly Issei's body began to glow, the troops guarding him had fallback due to the sudden white hot flare-up, that up he's right there. Leviathan was stirring in her mind she was gritting her teeth, forcing her form to listen to her. You can finish this. She was crying as she slowly began to slither. She was screaming inside her mind, you can end this Seraphel. Her speed picked up her fangs were shattered, but she still had fragments that could pierce. Issei's body cooled, rrr it worked, but still stiff. His wings flapped slowing down Leviathan who was barreling down towards him. She struck clamping down on his neck, launching them both back tumbling into the capital's castle walls. She did not pierce his scales, but the bite was strong enough to choke him. Issei then stabbed his front claws into the back of Leviathan's head, he's struggling to get a grip. Come on, work with a solid crunch his claws cracked her scales as her eyes widened. Her mouth was loose in grip as another crunch was echoed out as claws pierced through breaking flesh. Her blood leaked out from the cracks of Issei's claws, with a twist Leviathan lost her hold. He then violently slammed her to the ground another crunch then a loud snap. Leviathan's eyes rolled to the back of her head, her body went slack with her tongue falling to the wayside outside her mouth. It was over. Leviathan began to glow bright pink as she returned to her devil form. The back of her neck revealed a gaping hole that was bleeding out, her neck was snapped, but it was the wound that ended her. 
Issei then took to the air his body now functional, like a serpent he flew round the entire castle wrapping along its walls. As he reached the top of it, he let out a powerful roar echoing throughout hell. Hell. Dragon territory, the roar was more than just that, it was a call. The surrounding inhabitants looked toward the direction of the call. For a moment the dragons paused then looked inquisitively at one another, unsure if to answer it. Earth. Mount Everest, Issei's call echoed throughout the mountain range, nearby monasteries halted daily activities to peer outside. As soon as it was over the entire range began to quake. Unable to escape these ancient monuments to peace and harmony began to collapse. There were no survivors as their blood then began to gather and flow in a single direction. The world's largest mountain erupted as a cavernous fault formed, and a stream of human blood poured in. A bright crimson flash poured out of the fault, then condensed into a single beam as something shot out and into a small magic circle of unknown design. Dimensional gap, in the home of the great red dragon, the coal reaches him causing him to awake and stir. His bright green emerald eyes opened and flashed. Sun. Earth. Familiar forest, Issei's roar reaches the deepest part of a cave that housed the forest's guardian Tiamat, the Chaos Karma Dragon. Drake. Unknown location between Earth and Hell, the terrorist organization known as the Cow's Brigade, halted its operations as one of its members, a Lolita gothically dressed one turned around. Office. Big monkey like Yakai that was the basis of one Son Goku from the epic journey to the West asks. She remained silent as she focused on the call. Something is not right, the Auroboros dragon replied softly, that cannot be Drake. She looked at her companions as their chosen leader went to her side. It does sound like him, but yet not him, Bali added, this was the host of the white heavenly dragon, Albion, who resided in the divine dividing sacred gear. Vali's eyes then widened that's not Drag that's Issei. Vali had fought him early last year when Issei was still human. The fight lasted almost till dawn, but he came out on top, but Issei took part of his power and sacred gear in the end. The top Talmud Baba Bathra Castle, Issei was perched on the castle's tallest tower, his wings fully spread showing his victory and dominance over the Leviathan territory. My brothers and sisters hear my call for I will wage war upon those who had enslaved us, sealing our powers to use as tools for their petty war. Issei was announcing his intent to his fellow dragons. Join me in liberating ourselves and taking back our place at the apex of all creation. Issei then gave out another roar. Join me as I remake this world and return our dominion over it. With that, he roared one final time. 9. Pandemonium, Hell's Capital. The Duke of Beelzebub and Falbium Asmodeus had just shot the messenger with a combined energy blast from their left hands. In unison, they slammed their fists on the table and fell to their knees. Leviathan. Beelzebub sighed covering his head with his arm. They were in the castle's war room before them was Hell's world map on the magic holo display, the pink territory symbolizing clan Leviathan went dark, then changed to a burning flame, adding to Issei's conquests of the Gregorian clan Gremory. He murdered her and enslaved her people. Asmodeus fell back leaning on the chair behind him. Issei had taken out their intelligence gathering division and key strategist. The loss of clan Leviathan resulted in a halt in operations and reconsolidation of power. Plans A and B were shot, now they had to come up with plan C to Z. The thought of aid from their allies within the Silver City filled them with disgust followed by illness. What of Mount Drake and the other dragons Ajuka? Did you not hear that roar Falbium? Ajuka could barely lift his head, his eyes were closed trying to process what just occurred. That was the alpha cry of domination. Beelzebub took another breath, no doubt they are gathering to his call and will aid him in our collective destruction. But their nature? Asmodeus replied, however true his words were, dragons, by design, rarely coexisted with each other, their own pride demanded solitude and dominion over a territory. Is irrelevant now, he just declared war on us all. Neither Satan could translate what Issei said, but they felt his intent clearly as the burning display in front of them. No doubt Michael is on the move, and there is nothing we can do about it. That angel is more devil than us at times Ajuka, Asmodeus had to agree, goddamn that ing overgrown lizard. He slammed his fist on the ground, Beelzebub shared in his comrade frustrations. Almed Baba Bathra, Leviathan clan capital, formerly, Issei landed at the castle's inner courtyard going into his human form as he touched down. He was wearing scale mail as he called his team of fallen and enthralled devils. Chain the remnants of your clan and bring them to me, he ordered, then chain yourselves. The enthralled saluted with their left fist to their s and bowed to Issei. He then looked to his fallen, assist in rounding them up and do not execute, or I would use you as my personal stress ball. The fallen swallowed hard and understood mimicking the enthralled salute they took off on their assignment. Issei then called out to Azazel Leviathan has fallen. Oh shit man you did it the governor general responded unsure what to think. The final two have pulled back their forces, the first wave lackeys have been dispatched accordingly. Issei took a moment, he said it so coldly, he had no room to talk as he knelt down examining Sir Awful dead body. Orders my lord. 
As Say looked to the sky with a smile, we regroup and strike pandemonium within the hour. Do not let them catch their breath, smart dot with that Issei cut the line with Azazel, as several dragons landed morphing into human forms. The red heavenly dragon emperor stood as full length as his helm phased out as he turned to meet them. You are not drag. Tiamat was the first to speak, she was a tall Amazon of a woman dressed in an armored blue and gold gown. Her hair was waist length, cerulean blue that gave off a certain elegance as it shimmered in the light. Her skin was light and sun-kissed with a very curvaceous body that would make anyone male, female, or whatever they self-identified as to lose their very breath. Issei was struggling not to fall for her, but was failing fast as he looked upon her heart-shaped face losing himself in her ocean blue eyes. They were sharp that seemed to pierce his very innermost being. Who are you, where is that lying bastard drag, that was his call. Issei snapped back to reality as the sound of his predecessor's name hallowed him. She takes notice of his sudden change, Issei took a shaky breath, but found his resolve as he spoke. I was Drag's host. Tiamat suddenly became hostile along with several others. He saved my life, liberated me from my masters. He clenched his fist as he released his aura. Then gave his life for me to be reborn, with a sudden burst of energy the lower class dragons caved under his pressure. I love that ing overgrown lizard, I will not forget, nor will I dishonor the name of my savior and friend. Tiamat was not buying it, Issei knew it, and met her charge head on grabbing her throat and slamming her to the ground. His head suddenly and briefly changed to his dragon one, and met her roar with that of his own. Tiamat struggled and flailed as Issei mounted her, his act was so brazen causing her to blush. You are free to go Tiamat, but I will not tolerate your bullshit. Tiamat ceased for Issei had her pinned down. I know your history with him, I am not him. You're wrong, you are him more than you realize Red Dragon Emperor. Issei released her and then helped her up. I believe you Issei, what do you need? Issei dodged sending the hidden blade, Graham into the side of Tannen. The leader of the Dragon Mountain coughed out blood as Issei then hit him with a point-blank dragon shot. More blood burst from his mouth as his eyes seemed to pop out, Tannen. Issei then rotated around him sending him crashing to the ground with a charged elbow. Tannen quickly flipped on to meet the tip of Ascalon pointed at his neck. Enough. Issei roared silencing any remaining challengers. Tannen closed his eyes in submission as Issei called back the Dragon Slayer sword. I do not have time to stroke all of your ing egos, you heard my terms. Stay her off. He then increased his aura increasing the pressure around him. At this volley fell from the sky his balance breaker in full display. Volley. The divine dividing dragon emperor now had his full attention. He charged without a second thought ripping him off the ground, then slamming him again, and again, and again. Not this time you ing bastard. He then threw him up into the sky, with a roar his body explodes, revealing his heavenly dragon form. Vali did not have a chance to go into Juggernaut Drive as Issei bit down on his torso. Blood exploded from the force of his bite as he thrashed him about before sending him crashing back down to hell. Divide. Vali cried out as Issei decreased his power. You claim to be my rival. Going into a Divibum Issei was going to end this pretentious asshole. That ends right now. Vali looked up in horror, this was not the kid he fraud over a year ago. What the happened to him, a feeling grabbed hold of him that he had not felt in ages, complete and utter terror. Vali. Suddenly Issei is met by a black dragon with a pulsating purple celestial energy. The dragon's body was that of nightmares, spines and javelin-like spikes covered her entire body. This was the Arabus dragon she was larger than Issei by 100 meters all around from wingspan to her tail. Stop. Her voice was soft, but was filled with all the authority of her role as a dragon god. Issei stood no chance in, well, hell or any plane of this universe for that matter. So he bowed his head landing returning to human form as he touched down. Orphis did the same returning to her gothic Lolita human form. The other dragons diffidently did not challenge her like they did Issei. As the others bowed Issei remained standing, interesting. He simply narrowed his eyes, he did not care if she was a deity or not, he would not bow down to anyone anymore. I could destroy you. Better to die on my feet than below yours Orphis. Issei's voice was even, or anyone's for that matter, Drake did not give his life to free me, only for me to bow before another master. Interesting. She bore no expression as she continued to analyze him. Drag is gone and chose you. Her head continued to tilt her head trying to make heads or tails of this new heavenly red dragon emperor. She then turned to Vali who lay broken before them. He surpassed you making Drag's power his own. Vali could barely move, red dragon emperor could you please heal him. Issei stared at her a moment, then looked at Vali then back at her. He took a breath, his crusade was more important than petty rivalries that he rose past. Heal. Issei casts the spell on him reviving him, Vali could now barely stand. He wanted to attack and lash out at Issei, but was now severely outclassed now. Orphis was not amused but let it go, Vali was a dragon anyways, he'll live. So Orphis was cut off as Issei tackled her as an explosion overtook the area. 
Issei's twelve wings protected them as the energy gathered into a blood-red jewel surrounded by a black housing. Issei parted his wings letting him and Orphis look on. No. Orphis suddenly broke free of Issei going into her dragon mode. It was too late as the jewel blasted her away. Below the jewel was a pillar of blood forming a display for it, the blood was from the fallen leviathan soldiers. Everyone destroy that 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 abomination. Issei turned to the frightened dragon god, his own blood going cold, he then turned to the blood red jewel and fired a shot. The ricocheted off of the jewel as several other blasts did not even scratch it as it began to pulsate. Issei stopped was that. Laughter. Orphis shot it in a collective energy blast from the other dragons, but the blast seemed to hit a barrier. I, who hath awakened, am the abysmal dragon who stole the principles of ruination from the true Lucifer, the Satan of the end, I worship at the infinite, and I scowl at the dream I am the black dragon of annihilation, Bahamut, and I shall banish you into the depths of the eternal abyss. Suddenly the jewel unleashed an overwhelming power overshadowing all. Orphis fell, followed by Issei and the rest. Issei Haidu. It called out to him. Issei struggled to look up as the jewel called to him again, Orphis tried to reach for him, but a barrier surrounded him, and the jewel isolated them from the rest. Issei still could barely raise his head. Who what are you? Rise. Bahamut proclaimed, prove yourself worthy of my power nephew. At his last word Issei was taken back. Drag was my beloved nephew sealed within you. Rise. His words were all consuming like the abyss from where he once resided. Issei gritted his teeth as he got to his knee, this dragon's power was beyond anything he had ever felt since, Bahamut sensed his thoughts, indeed he is my, how do your people say yes, my Ani chan Issei was now on his feet as body burned and lurched as he forced himself to take a step. Outside Orphis was trying in vain to reach Issei, but her blasts and magics were not even denting the barrier. I am not your nephew. Issei managed to say as the jewel pulsated in laughter. You and Drag are one, reincarnated into one another you are my dragunkin. Issei continued to move towards him, it's my blood that now flows through you, as well as great reds. Bahamut chuckled, it is why you are withstanding my power. Issei finally reached the jewel, yes you are truly my nephew. Issei stared at the jewel, take hold of your destiny, reach out and take my power and vanquish them all. Issei stood his ground. What are you waiting for? Is this my own decision? Bahamut roared in laughter at Issei's question, I will not be anyone's slave. At Issei's last word Bahamut was silenced and his power stopped. Slave. He was confused, then felt a surge of anger. Slave. Bahamut read his mind and manifested his persona in a black and blue dragon outline. Never. I will slaughter them all. Bahamut's words were sincere and boiled with a wrath Issei knew all too well. Elohim fooled me into this seal jewel, this cursed sacred gear. Now knowing that he was in control of himself, Issei listened to the annihilation dragon. He used me to seal my beloved Trahiksa your call broke my seal. Trahiksa will kill us all. Yeah, angels, fallen, and devils. Humans. No, not worth the trouble honestly, the affairs of man are beneath us. They will be their own undoing. The other pantheons. Summitered I, plain and simple. That was an interesting concept to say thought as Bahamut brushed off the last question. My beloved Trahiksa and I only want to vanquish those arrogant fools. We are the apex of creation, and now these factions have overstayed their welcome. Hein, Issei grabbed the blood red jewel, Uncle Bahamut, let's do this. The jewel flashed surging with power beyond understanding. Thus say my name again with some dragon balls. Bahamut. The jewel shattered and the soul of the black dragon of annihilation entered to say. Let's change the world and get anti back. Bahamut burst out laughing at his declaration. The barrier shattered and was absorbed into his say. Annihilation dragon emperor balance breaker. Blood booster armor. Scale mail. Bahamut declared. Issei's red dragon emperor armor then turned black with red highlights over most of his body, save his right gauntlet which had white highlights. All of hell began to quake as black purplish energy shot up from newly formed faults on the ground, shooting past the realm and striking heaven. Issei's fists shook as he got acclimated to his newfound power. Orphis charges, he merged with it. She was still in her dragon form, but Issei batted her away. He then turned to the others as they began to tremble. It's over. Issei gave an authoritative stomp sending everyone to their knees. Choose your fate. Issei began, with me or against me, choose. We stand with you Black Annihilation Emperor. Issei heard them shout, then looked at Orphis, she then bowed her head returning to her human form, and bent the knee. Issei nodded in acceptance, then opened up several magic circles, as his forces took to the air and threw them. As they left Issei saw his fallen soldiers along with the chained enthralled and what was left of Clan Leviathan. He released his hold on them, his aura sent them face down along with the fallen. Die. Issei said as he focused on the devils, his aura's pressure exploded bathing him in crimson rain. His S jewel was now a mixture of blood red and emerald green dancing around as the rain was channeled into it, causing it to pulse. 
He then turned to Orphis as she waited for him above the clouds, he soon joined her, and together they flew into it. 10. Pandemonium, Hell's Capital. As the name of the castle, it was pandemonium across various points of Beelzebub's territory, as magical circles opened up. Dragons flooded out napping everything in sight. Screams of terror and various other sounds of fear as the burning hellscape began to consume everything around them. Above it all Issei and Orphis observed the Bedlam nephew. Ahmed spoke from the jewel that adorned the of his new blood booster armor. Scale male has evolved into this permanent form. Strangely enough, he enjoyed his new status, yes Uncle Baba. Papa in Chinese at the last word Bahamut let out a deep laugh at the play of words. Would you like to see a technique that will increase this glorious insanity 10, no thousand, a million fold. Bahamut was mad with laughter as Orphis stared at them in a mixture of fear and disgust. Oh get over yourself Orphi. You're a disgusting abomination. Orphis replied her voice stoic as ever. Well, Uncle Baba that sounds awe-inspiring. Issei loved this familiar interaction with his new uncle, it reminded him of how it was when Drag was around. Uncle. The thought made him nostalgic. I love Drake very much, from what I am sensing from you, I rubbed off on him quite a bit. That's about the best thing my son picked up from you. Orphis hissed causing Issei to do a double take. Why do you think I was forced out of my home? Can you blame my brother Orphi? Bahamut said, you tried to steal him away, only for you to run my nephew away. Orphis turned her head as a tear fell down her cheek. What did you expect me to do, toss him aside, like both of you had done? Flashback. Several millennia ago, dimensional gap. Great Red and Orphis never stopped for a moment, not even to catch a breath. A young Drag lived with their constant fighting, it was mostly argumentative, but sometimes, not often, it divulged into physical violence. Just stop. He had finally had enough, why the hell not end it, why constantly live in toxicity. They both hissed and roared at him for his disrespect, then in a moment of clarity, realized he was right. Orphis then moved towards Drag and told him that they were leaving causing him to pause. Orphis had always been straightforward, boisterous, and a bit crazy. Drag was not having none of that. No. His words struck her to her very soul. No, mother, I will not go with you. She moved to discipline him only for great red move to stop her. The robber's dragon snapped as father and son turned on her and cast her out of the dimensional gap. Thank you my suddenly great red is cut off. Boost. Drag called out and attacked his father. Screw you both. Dryag left his home that day and arrived in ancient Wales, from there he traveled throughout Dark Age Europe. This was how his legend grew as the Welsh Red Dragon Emperor, which then became a myth when he found him. Drag was exploring what would become known as Mount Everest. The storm was massive so he took shelter in a cave. Red. The voice called out from deep within the cave, now you come to save me big brother. The voice was now dark and sinister sounding. I am not my father. Drag replied in a low growl. Father? What? The voice was confused, come closer to me child, it called out to him, Dryag could feel the voice's power, it drew him like a moth to the flame. Almost there child. Dryag sent his fire ahead of him igniting the cavern's roof, only for it to slowly head to the voice leading him on. He came to what could only be described as an altar with a blood-red jewel encased in the blackest of casings. Yes. You are my kin, I see him in you. The jewel voice seemed to crack in joyous tears. Who are you? Dryag asked as now the jewel was bawling as crimson tears seemed to come from jewel. Why are you crying, have you no pride? Foolish child, I am crying because of my pride, the pride of my family's line is before me. Drake backed up as he was overwhelmed by the jewel's power. Tell me my dear child what is your name? I am called the Welsh Dragon Emperor, Drake. Drake bows his head as the jewel's tears flow like a river. You are strange, I can feel that you are a powerful dragon. Indeed I am Dryag, my dearest nephew. The jewel declared boldly beaming with pride. Nephew? My father's brother was killed when he ended Elohim. Is that what he told you? The jewel replied, I am the black dragon of annihilation, the dragon god Bahamut. At his words, his godly power bursts out sending Drake to the ground from the pressure and fear. Rise. Bahamut ordered him as he increased the pressure, the command was like a challenge to his dragon's pride. Rise. Drake then forced himself to his feet meeting his new uncle's challenge. The ears turned into centuries as Drake became Bahamut's disciple, meeting every challenge till finally. My beloved nephew your time is now. Drake drew closer to the jewel. You are now strong enough for your awakening, I am so proud. Drake could not help himself as his tail wagged in anticipation, causing Bahamut to laugh at his actions. You should be excited bow your head. Drake did as he was told as a red energy ball was released from the jewel. With great pride Bahamut began, you, who I am about to awaken. Will now become the heavenly dragon who hath stolen the principles of domination from God. Laugh at the infinite, and grieve at the dream you shall become the red dragon of domination, and shall sink thine enemies into the depths of the crimson purgatory. Drake let out a roar as his blood began to boil as his bloodline's power began to awake. 
Bahamut from the jewel roared as he manifested a celestial projection, revealing how his true form looked like. Go forth my beloved drake, grab hold of your destiny, let no one take it away. The cave began to shake with their roars, go nephew. Drake paused, uncle, but. Become stronger, the strongest, and we shall reunite in this physical plane. Bahamut said with utter joy in his voice. I swear this uncle, I will set you free, and we will be together again, then rule Bahamut cut him off. No dear nephew, it is you who will rule, I just want to be by my beloved nephew's side. The cave then collapsed as Drake shot up breaking through the ceiling launching himself to the heavens. I love you, my son, were his last words as the jewel fell into a crevasse as the roof buried him. I will not fail you uncle, Drake swore. Flashback ends. Issei shook his head, he saw it all through Drake's and Bahamut's eyes, he then looked at Orphis as the rage built within him. You bitch. He screamed at her with tears in his eyes, how could you? Orphis suddenly saw her son in Issei's eyes as she felt old scars being ripped open. He then turned back to Bahamut, you loved him didn't you uncle? More than you know nephew, he was my son. Bahamut said with pain in his voice, suddenly their souls synced. You are ready. Issei nodded as his body lit up like the sun in black flames. Together they let out a great roar as Issei grew to titanic proportions with each echo from their roar. His body was now bipedal with massive arms covered in his same black and red armored scales. His wingspan increased to 200 meters, with now more slender-like wings proportionate to the 12 he had in his balance breaker form. His neck had more mass to its serpentine form ending at the base of his head. His head was darker, but remained very much the same features as Drag only now with two massive curving horns that pointed outward at the tips. The dark striped band pattern followed up the length of his horns ending in blackest of tips. From head to tail Issei's new dragon form was now 300 meters, with large spikes starting at the base of his neck, gradually shrinking to his whip-like tail. His and upper back were large supporting massive shoulders that held his wings and arms. His middle torso was flexible and solid as it was slender that lead to wide hips. His legs were solid muscle covered with the same armored black and red scales. His knees each had a pair of black spikes that ended with four clawed feet. Below the fighting had long stopped as both armies froze in terror at the sight before and above him. Bahamut returns. A devil general shouted that started a chain reaction of trembling terror deep in the hearts of Issei's enemies. Be consumed by the abyss, tremble in utter despair. Both forces of Beelzebub and Asmodeus lost their will to fight giving in to their terror. Feed my power, merciless. Instantly the great Satan's armies fell as their very souls left their bodies and entered Issei by the tens of thousands. Harvest celebration. It hath begun Bahamut began as Issei's dragon form now pulsated a bright blue as the black annihilation dragon spoke. Uncle you are not going, Issei said somberly. Bahamut chuckled reassuringly, oh no my dear nephew, I would not dare. Please do not leave me. Issei's voice cracked, he had just lost Drake he could not take another loss like that. Drake. Dear nephew worry not you are only going to become a dragon god. Bahamut laughed madly to which Issei now shared. But the great quake Issei landed in front of Pandemonium Castleet was the size of a small city with several tiers of towers, walls, courtyards, guard stations. At the top was a keep-like structure with a balcony that extended from the throne room to the outside. Along its walls, six towers of varying height seemed to be defiantly piercing the heavens. The massive city-sized structure also contained several villages divided into three boroughs, with each one on a different tier, segregating the commoner at the lowest tier to the nobility at the top tier. The middle tier served as a sort of large marketplace where both classes intermingled when in need of goods and services. At the keep Beelzebub and Asmodeus bore witness to their armies being disseminated. Enough. They both shouted to Issei as they fell to their knees. We surrender. Their armies were gone, their souls used as food to feed the abomination before them. They would have fought till the end, but feared to meet the same fate as their forces feeding the new annihilation dragon's ascension. They were grateful that their former leader Rizavum Live and Lucifer was gone, presumed Kia. Issei had won, magic circles opened up as the rest of his forces arrived. Azazel and his fallen fell in behind Issei awaiting orders. Secure them, interrogate them, find out how to free the sacred gears of their dragons. Azazel and his forces saluted then took the castle. Azazel, the governor general turned to look at him. The libraries are yours just share what you find only to me. Azazel let a smirk rise from the side of his mouth as he saluted his lord commander. Issei then turned to the dragons who now were on bended knee. The capital is my domain and its land, divide the rest of hell among yourselves. The dragons roared in celebration. Any tech, intel, or ancient scrolls, texts, etc. are to be brought to the capital immediately no exceptions. More approving roars resounded as he finished up and dismissed. Orphis only remained tears in her eyes, abomination, Issei please listen, free yourself from Bahamut. Please before it's too late. With her warning she disappeared into her own magic circle. Issei tucked her warning away putting a pin in it. Bahamut said nothing, nor did his host question him on it. 
the Silver City. Evan was dead silent throughout its territory, Bahamut had returned, and Issei was playing host to it. They were the only faction left in the fallacy that was the Alliance. Michael sat upon his throne his heavenly smile was now gone, as fear gripped his every emotion in his being. His advisors shared his same look of fear, losing the devil faction, hell, hell itself to Issei was not the real threat, Bahamut's awakening was. Suddenly a magic circle opened revealing the Grimmery crest appeared as Rias, Kaneko, and Akeno stepped out with Trina. They all fell to their knees before Michael. Rias was the first to raise her head, help us please, I beg of you. Rias said through tears as an angel ran her through. She fell dead before them only to resurrect moments later. The angel was about to stab her again, but Michael raised his hand stopping him. Okay I will. Michael's heavenly smile returned as Rias shook at how eerie it looked. A slow clapping was suddenly heard as Michael and the rest directed their attention. See Michael the first told you she was cursed. The voice belonged to Riz of them live in Lucifer. So shall we began. He gestured with his hand only for Asia to appear, her expression was blank. We have her so, Asia sprouted two sets of angel wings, Rias and company gasped covering their mouth as Zenovia walked to her side with angel wings and her devil ones below them. Her expression was also just as blank as Asia. Indeed. Michael then turned to Rias and the remaining peerage. Take them. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video. Like subscribe and comment down below and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow Lucifer S. Morningstar for writing that awesome fanfic and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.